Hey, hi everyone. This is Scott, your Northwest Geology Guy. And today I'm attempting to do something that's probably the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, I'm trying to cover what happened uh, on November 11th at uh, Maynot Island between Madagascar and Africa. And we, as a lot of you guys probably already know about the weird signal that was detected with no possible cause and it traveled uh, 11,000 miles from Mayotte all the way over to Hawaii and nobody seems to, to know what it is. Now the scientists are thinking it may be that a magma chamber under there collapsed but I just can't buy into that because things like that have happened in the past and Nobody's ever seen a signal like this. Uh, it was a very perfect teleseism that traveled all the way over to Hawaii, and it lasted for over 20 minutes. And it was felt, you know, in Canada, Chile, New Zealand, um, just all over the place. And to me, that just don't seem plausible to be just a simple magma chamber collapsing that would uh, ring the earth like a bell, but... I'm going to attempt and do the very best I can to tell you what I think it might have been. I have a couple uh, working theories, but like I said, there's just not a lot of information out there that will uh, lead me in one direction or the other. So I don't feel bad. If the scientists can't figure it out, <laughs> I'm just an amateur. But um, here here we go over here um, where Mayotte is over here. And usually... When you're trying to figure out what caused something, you have to look at the bigger picture. Over here, we have the East African Rift Valley where uh, eventually uh, Africa will split into two continents and two different plates because of the rifting that goes up through here. Um, the magma from down below comes up and starts to push the continent apart and fills in with new land like the East Pacific rise um, nor uh, the Atlantic Ridge mid-Atlantic Ridge um, stuff like that so eventually it's gonna pull uh, the east part of Africa away from the the main continent now what I'm thinking is if there was a slow progression eastward of the African plate there it may not have been too noticeable if it was continuous and very slow kind of like our slow slip earthquakes but if um, the continent started to separate a little bit without causing a, a detectable earthquake that may have sent off that weird signal that traveled around the, uh, the world basically um, which Kind of reminds me of what uh, Ben Fur Furriolo um, found, not just this year, but last year, uh, at almost a exact year intervals of a strange seismic signal that came from the East Coast and was detected uh, way over here in Washington, too. And if you've watched any of his videos on it, um, he goes into a lot more detail because he's the wizard of uh, seismology, not me. I'm more the geology guy, and that that could have caused that. Uh, I just don't know because there's no uh, no data on it that I can read on it. Um, what has happened when the the ground started cracking and started pulling away a little bit? It I just can't find any seismic data on that. But that's one of my theories, and if it was coming from deep under the continent. That definitely could have had the, the energy to send off a signal that goes that far. But with teleseisms, um, it was picked up uh, worldwide on the world uh, helioplots when the Alaska had their 7.0 earthquake. So, you know, things can occur like that that echo around the planet. But I'll go, let's go try to see what else... Uh, the other thing I have, here's the graph here of the uh, East Rift 
valley and where it's starting to separate. Um, which, if you look, oh, I can't move that, but Mayotte is down here on the right-hand bottom corner. And that's not that far away. So if they were trying to place where it started, that's not really geographically that far away. So let's go on to the other one I have here. And this is a, a video that shows uh, the ground cracking here after some heavy rainstorms. Uh, it, it helped uh, lubricate the, the fault here and pulling apart. And my other theory is maybe, um, and I can't find a lot of information on this either, but I had one, uh, one site that told me that there was some uh, anomalies in the outer core. And they're up towards the top of the of the outer core. Um, due to our uh, magnetic pole shifting that's already started. It's been go, uh, starting a long time ago. But it's a very gradual uh, progression until the poles will actually flip. Where south will become where the north pole is. And the north pole down here where the south pole is. But... Um, that could have sent off some kind of weird seismic signal if there was a disruption in the outer core that could have caused this signal. But I'm thinking uh, that here, here's a, a diagram of the Earth's shields, the magnetic uh, shields here. And they've been acting really goofy lately, too. They're jumping all over the place back and forth. Um, Mary Greeley from Mary Greeley News um, has had a compass on her uh, shelf that she's never touched uh, probably for over a year, year and a half now. And, you know, she used to report on that in the early uh, part of that where it would move up to 11, 12 degrees uh, in one direction and slowly go back and then jump back again. So the magnetic uh, magnetic fields are not staying in the same place. They're restless and they, they want to flip, but none of us have been around the last time it flipped, so we don't know how that's going to uh, occur or uh, how long it takes. But I'm really thinking that uh, it's going to be one of the other uh, uh, theories I have working rather than just a collapse of a magma chamber that would cause that long of a seismic si signal and that perfect and to travel that far um it wasn't felt around the entire planet like uh the magnitude 7 alaskan quake but it sure picked up uh well uh on a lot of the seismographs and was pretty perfect and it looked the same on every graph even the world helioplots will show a little different variation uh of a signal uh from the same source so it's just very very odd um i i've put so many hours into this searching uh at work on my phone i'm reading things uh trying to figure out uh, uh what information i can dig up on it but this is still relatively very new and very unique because um even this uh the seism world seismologists are stumped. And you know when professionals are stumped, the, they're not going to look want to look stupid. So they come up with uh, a theory that could be kind of plausible. But they'll run with that just so they don't look stupid. But uh, I don't have anything to lose. I'm just an amateur. I'm working the best I can with uh, the information that I can find. And thank God for the internet now, because we can find all kinds of information if you know where to look. And I've been doing this for a very long time. I was very interested uh, at a very early age. I was six when I happened to open up uh, something you guys probably never seen, an encyclopedia. And uh, I saw a, a night picture of a volcano erupting, spewing lava up out of the cone. And I was just in awe. I had to have my mom uh, read it to me because I couldn't read very well, uh, especially big words like that at six years old. But um, I've, I've been really uh, into it ever since Mount St. Helens woke up. 
before the 1980 eruption and been very interested in uh, the Cascade volcanoes and a lot of the volcanoes are famous ones around the earth that are very active but um, when the internet came out oh my god that has been such a gift from God uh, for researchers that you can find almost anything uh, except for what happened at Mayotte. <laughs> but um, I'm going to continue to research this. Um, I know Ben did his uh, report on it. Um, I'm going to, I know Ben is probably going to still be looking into this because that's his main, uh, main love is seismology. And this is, this has seismology all over it. So um, I will uh, post another video as soon as I have uh, more to report on. Um, I'm not holding my breath that uh, we'll actually ever find out what that was until maybe it happens again and somebody has some better uh, data. But I would like to give a shout out. I can't remember the gentleman's name from New Zealand that he's an, also an amateur. Uh, he's the one that detected it and brought it to everybody's attention. The so-called professionals never saw it. And I know Ben even contacted uh, uh, the YVO, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, with the information and spoke to the lead scientist in charge, Michael Poland. And he didn't know what he was talking about. Uh, and he was going to give it over to his seismologist, and he still hasn't heard back. Um, because when they can't figure out what it is, they either ignore it or come up with some lame excuse that, that is easily, uh, not what it's supposed to be, uh, you know, they're fibbing to you, but okay, guys, uh, I'm going to get out of here, get back to doing some research and, uh, I hope uh, to see you back uh, on my next video. Please don't forget to subscribe and click on the the bell to get further notifications of new videos coming out and make sure you like it um share it with your friends and put your thoughts down in the comments and let me know what you guys are thinking um and let me know too this is a brand new microphone i just bought a desktop microphone it's not high end but it's better than the natural uh cheapies so you guys take care have a wonderful monday and I'm out of here.